E. It says meeting is now streaming on Facebook. I think we're there. I think we're on. So <laughs> <laughs> it's always a you know, a wondering with you. Yeah. Guys. So here my phone keeps making a noise. I should have tended that. Um, but I, you know, Pastor Amy and King Kinsley and uh, Pastor Frank Espergren here on the Facebook Live coffee. Do you have your coffee? I didn't. Well, I you... have actually some iced tea. So <laughs> I, I have my Frank, coffee. my Frank Great America coffee mug. So I'm That's perfect. I'm, I'm sad. Yeah. My first, my first paying job oh, really? that I had for three weeks at Fort Fun in on Great, Great America. And I thought I'm never going to last the summer. And very thankfully the Bureau of Land Management called and said, do you want a firefighting job? And I said, yes. And I took the mug <laughs> just to remember, anyway. yeah. just to remember how hard kids were and it was good, but wonderful and tough. So yeah, it's good to to remember those things. My first job was a supermarket job. So um, my hearts are with uh, those who are on the front lines of the supermarket, including my sister actually, who is still working in, in the supermarket, so. I think every um, every time I go through a check checker, I say, hey, thank you for showing up to work and yeah. keeping us going here. So it's odd, we should, you know, we're treating it like normal, but it's it's odd times. We're, yeah. um, we're making our way through and, um, some some people are mostly home and some people are going out there and putting their lives a little bit in the way of of a pandemic for our sake so yeah, yeah. well and we're going to what scripture might have to say uh to us in these times and so thank you for your sermon this morning um uh, yeah. anyone who's uh tuning in we uh we're doing john chapter 10 verses 1 through 10 so you can find your bible we're not going to read the story but pastor frank's going to give us a little recap in a second. So you can look online or in your Bible for John chapter 10, one through 10. So yeah, this is this is an odd Sunday in the Easter season. Good, It's um, the Good Shepherd Sunday. It's always the fourth Sunday of Easter. And I, all, I, th I feel like I always preach it. <laughs> and the reason I feel like I always preach it is this is not my favorite text. It's I've, I have felt it's a tough one. I don't yeah. I don't know about you, but I, I've struggled with this text. Yeah, well, even, you know, when I was choosing the Bible studies, we have Bible study on Tuesday and Thursday, and it's the same text. But I, as I was going through the Sundays, like the first Sunday was Thomas, and then the second Sunday was Road to Emmaus. So those are really, like, great stories to get into. Yeah, that's a great And then I was like, oh, it's Good Shepherd Sunday, but it's basically just sayings of Jesus. So I, I actually skipped to the end, which you touched on in your sermon but uh john chapter 21 where there's the story of the resurrection appearance and you know peter is asked to feed the sheep so there's kind of a, a connection but yeah it's like a hard text to like dig into in a way yeah i'm just going to chalk that up as a great minds think alike i was like okay there's got to be a resurrection text that will relate to this and then i then i was like oh my gosh he's telling peter to feed a sheep and lambs and i'm like that's pretty, that's pretty linked. And it's, and it is the same gospel. You know, a lot of times yeah. if you go off and out to uh, another gospel, the, the linkage is there, but it's not as you, you can't really say each of the gospel writers had the same kind of thinking about sheep and shepherding, but if it's showing up like, um, you know, some 15, 16, 17 chapters later, whatever it is, it's, you know, they're, they're thinking along the same lines. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's probably intentional then that John wanted us to remember, oh, Jesus talked about being a shepherd and taking care of sheep. And that was the interesting thing, I think for me in, you know, in John's gospel, there's like this intimate connection, right? Like Jesus talks in other places about like, I am in you and you are in me and as I am in the father. And so there's this like sort of sense, at least I get that, well, we are, we are linked to God's mission and God's work. And so it's sort of like, I'm the good shepherd. And now you go be good shepherds, go feed, my right. sheep, feed my lambs. I, 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 one of the ways I've struggled with this gospel, and that's why I really loved your children's message. Uh, I, I, I have co of course, no Moses. And so when you pulled the lamb outfit out, I was like, <laughs> oh, I gotta, I gotta see this. This is, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Because he is all puppy. He is. Lo <laughs> wonderful. A wonderful. Uh, I knew he'd illustrate being, the going. Wonderful being in there, but it's a lot of energy. <laughs> yes, I knew he'd illustrate the going our own way kind of. <laughs> yeah. 
you like, you know, she you didn't have to, you didn't have to coach him on that. You didn't have to coach him on that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> It was built in. I was like, he's going yeah, to want to. So, so this is a story. Jesus is telling a story. He, it, it's, it's way earlier um, in the gospel story, a gospel story than we're used to in uh, when we have our Sundays in Easter. And so, and so he's telling a story about, um, you know, trying to help the disciples understand about, and it's always about who God is, who he is and who we are. And all, if, if you ask, who am I? Who is God? Who is Jesus? You're you're on, you're you're asking good questions that aren't always easily answered or fully ever fully answered. By the way, yeah, or understood, right? Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing that. <laughs> oh no, we got, we got this all understood, don't we, Pastor? Right, Amy, I mean, this no. we we understand, <laughs> but you know, like, maybe that's how you feel when you you know when you're preaching. It's like, well, I hope that people are getting this, you know, because. Yeah. I always tell people when they comment on a sermon, I say, well, I preach, I, I'm definitely a preacher that does the work, but I, my sermons always end up addressing my own need. So yeah. I, I, if, if my sermon resonated with you, then I, then you're kind of in my, I always feel like you're in the boat that I feel I'm in. And yeah. I, I just can't stay in as a preacher in, off in the, in the theological books forever. I love those preachers who can just kind of stay, um, in, in that in, in the in that realm of lofty ideas that touch the heart but I have to get back to my own stuff that's happening yeah. inside me and so and so here here he's here he oh you were gonna say something oh, no I was just gonna say I think you know one thing that came up in our Bible study on that other text but I think relates here too is that you know even though John's gospel can be sort of out there like it's the most um heavenly or like the heavenly realm comes in a lot because Jesus is like he's clear who he is whereas in the right. other gospels he's somewhat figuring it out and so there's sort of like this connection to the heavenly realm but jesus always brings it to like very earthly things and very human things and so he in the store in this saying he's using these like really tangible images for the disciples yeah yeah and that's and and there that was you know um you you've been there you've lived there but sh a sheep shepherding is a have been a way of life in that part of the world forever. I think you've mentioned it still is, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, um, I've spent like well, I visited to the Holy Land four times, but one oh of wow, I didn't know that many times. Yeah, yeah. And one of those times, I spent three months actually doing some human rights work, and so I I remember um, seeing shepherds a lot, and they look like. Teen I mean, they're teenagers or 10 year, you know, preteens like out with the sheep often, like, and in your sermon, you talked about like how for us in America, like urban people and suburban people, like we are, you know, like I didn't see a sheep, you know, we had to go to a petting zoo to see a sheep. <laughs> like a big deal. Um, but in the Holy Land, like I lived in the city of Hebron for like three months and right in the middle of the city, they'd be grazing sheep on like just the side, like you know, a little shrubbery on the side of the road or like, yeah. you know, and so it's very much a, like a, a mix of two worlds kind of that we see them very distinct, like rural and urban, but. Yeah, the, and the well. rural urban divide we're experiencing our country two two different ways, often two different ways of seeing the world. Um, we we were more able to to make our way to each other. Um, and so so I'm, I'm, I'm maybe the sheep is one of the ways this kind of sense of, of um, you know, you know, you know how people in the city, like I, I know uh, the only sheep I know comes in a little package, you know, right. and, <laughs> like... and, and that's, and that's, um, you know, that's part of the problem with this gospel as I experience it. So when, when Jesus is calling us sheep um, and, you know, and really kind of asking us to think about that, you know, we don't have the entire ex experience to know, well, you know, all the, we, we just have these myths. Is a sheep stupid or is it right. not stupid? Is it the nuances of sheep behavior? Yeah, we don't, we don't know. Do they, do they really go astray? We haven't, we have to kind of do a little research. We have to trust the stories in the scriptures. Um, and we certainly don't know what a shepherd then is all about. Yeah. And, and um, I was reading in doing some research for this text that, that back um, in, in biblical times, especially in, in before Christ in the, in the Hebrew scriptures, the youngest son in a family 
ended up being the one that would tend the sheep. And the older siblings would move up into working with um, the father and, you know, and, and mother to, to do more kind of, kind of serious, I don't know, it's serious, um, but, but had different responsibilities like and the young, than, yeah. Like, yeah. And then if you were the youngest child, shepherd ended up being your career because you were then always the youngest child, even as you moved in. Right. Remember D David? Was a, yeah. And so there was the connection with all yeah, it's of like, where, where's your uh, other son? You're, you have another one. <laughs> He's saying he's yeah, out that's the, right. He's out with the sheep, you know. <laughs> when I remember, I there was um we lived in the city, but then when I was in the Holy Land for that three months, so we lived in a house in the city. Um, uh, but then we went out to like the fields around, and there was a community of people that lived there with their animals, the sheep, um, so that they could be on their land. And so we stayed with them because there was tension between um Israeli settlers on the hill that would come down and you know so we were there to be sort of a a peaceful presence or monitoring and and so i got up early like the men would get up and take the sheep herds out before it got too hot and i remember this one more the morning that we were there this little boy hamudi who was like six years old um and i was here i heard like this buying you know like from somewhere and i looked around and there was this little lamb who had gotten turned around and was facing like the wall of the tent and just like buying like, you know, <laughs> aimlessly, like somebody- What can else. I do about this? Right. And so his dad uh, said, Hamudi, go, you know, help help the, the lamb or whatever. So this little kid like came and scooped up this lamb that was almost like it was half his size, you know, like <laughs> took up like half his body and he took it over to the sheep pen to safety. And so I, I always get that image in my head when I hear I am the good shepherd and yeah. that you're meant to tend like, you know, so all of it's us a, of any age can be. Yeah. Good it's a very, the, 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 in this gospel, it's very relational. We're clearly the sheep, but it's always in relation to the shepherd. And by the way, what's odd about this gospel is Jesus, the gatekeeper lets Jesus, the shepherd in It looks like clearly kind of is the shepherd and the gate um and the and i think this gospel conflates jesus talking about this aspect of of, of who he is um yeah so um and so 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 it's so it's not a god if you're if you're like if, if logic has to rule in your head always you're going to struggle with this gospel yeah, because because he's both shepherd and gate at the same time, and for me right. that really helped me in the end. Yeah, and see if I'm remembering it right. I don't have it in front of me, but you know he he tries telling them first, like yeah, you know the shepherd, like he he says this whole thing about the shepherd knows the sheep by name, and the strange they won't listen to the stranger, right? But they don't get it. So then I think he's also trying to like okay. Maybe you'll get this image then, you know, yeah. but when you read it straight through, you're like, well, how is he both, like you said, both the shepherd and the gate? It, you can't be both those things, but it's, we also miss the sense that he's trying to tell the God, the disciple something in there. And again, like this cluelessness, like he's using earthly language, but they still don't really understand how he's using it. You know, and that that's a theme throughout the gospel. Like, yeah, have some water. And it's like, oh what kind of what you know living water and they're like well, well there's a well right here and he's like no no <laughs> it's a different kind you know or, so yeah, there's all these like images that they never get like yeah it's interesting in this gospel because he it says he used this figure of speech to try it, and it's one of those ways in which it's clearly says hey i'm talking to you some in symbolic language for you to get and sometimes our scientific literalistic brains are always trying to make the scriptures into a uh, a, a formulaic um, right. thing, a, a effort, and so I I always appreciate I appreciate it as I was preparing the sermon. It's like, hey, hey, he straight up says, "I'm using these figures of speech for you guys to understand." You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it, you know, it's interesting because you're right. I think we're very our society became very literal, right? Like in the sense yeah. of like we read, and you know, whereas for the people of Jesus time, 
they heard the stories and, and there was a m much more flexibility, I think. I mean, of course, you know, it's speculation on scholars parts, like how people heard things, but, but just from the literature or well, what we have passed down is literature, yeah. um, but the stories of the time that were oral and told, like, I think there was more flexibility and there were more like the images could be a little more um, flexible. We want to know like, well, what does this mean? Yeah. You know, and so, it, so it is hard sometimes for us, like, well, what, what would have been their experience in hearing right. this text? But I think in the end, for me, it was, it's about the relationship. But the, the, the sheep are not interesting to Jesus apart from the shepherd. Um, the, and, and, then the, and then part of the shepherd's tools for keeping them safe is a sheepfold, which has a gate. Could be very simple. I mean, it had to be mobile. Things had to move. So we're thinking kind of very structured, but probably it was very, everything was very mobile and kind of, um, and, 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 the, and the shepherd would, would stay with, you know, that's the point. It was, it, the shepherd is in relationship with the sheep for their care protection. And, and, and there's something to it that, you know, when you, when you had your children's message about you and Moses, I mean, we get it that you love Moses. I mean, you just have to be around you and Moses for five seconds. And I know you love Moses, right? But we do, but we want to divorce that kind of care out of a shepherd story because it's about uh, meat production or something. I don't right. know it, but we have to think that in a way I like to think of this story is there, there's a way more kind of unified understanding of how we are in the world completely, you know, a holistic understanding of yeah. how we, how we eat and how we exist in the world that is less divorced from our understanding that we we're all interconnected and that's where the love piece comes into this i believe and it's hard it's hard for our ears to get there yeah and i think of course if you haven't farmed or been a you know caretaker of animals for food production right like i, I was actually watching i hadn't thought about this till you just said that because i was watching the news and they were talking to a dairy farmer and you know and again we can vilify like industrial food you know production and stuff but you know with restaurants closed and you know all the places where people would have brought their produce whether you know meat or dairy or fruits vegetables whatever gone you know like farmers have had to make difficult choices and so this man was talking about having sent some of his dairy cows to a meat yeah production you know slaughterhouse but he was getting emotional about it. It wasn't just like, well, you know, I just had to like reduce my herd by whatever. Like he, he said, you know, if you ask any person in this industry or what, I forget how you said it, but he just yeah. said, they, they would say they'd rather have healthy animals than, you know, send them off to that. Yeah. And so just thinking too about like a smaller production, right? Like having sheep. I mean, those people that I lived with depended on those sheep. Yeah. for their life and yes they knew some of them or you know at at some point all of them would go to their table yeah but, you know that intimacy of like my life depends on you yeah and the sheep's life depends on the shepherd yeah um you know and and so in some ways abundant life for both of them is intertwined right it like, is you know. and, and and we for this interconnected world to work in an abundant way. I mean, I got to the end of this gospel and it was for you to have life abundantly. And for some reason I was like, how have I never thought that this is like, you get to the end, this is the point of it yeah. is abundant life. And maybe I heard it now because I'm presu I presume that life is anything but abundant right now, but, I, but it stopped me in my tracks to think about that presumption. Yeah. And, um, and so I, in, the, in this uh, wonderful story, it got me thinking about uh, the ways in which um, we are we, we are connected and we each do make sa sacrifices for each other. Um, to when, when things, when a relationship is working wonderfully, and now I'm talking about the realm of human beings and, and, those, and all of creation, because we know the one who makes all the sacrifice for us and I don't, I don't sacrifice any for Jesus to do what Jesus does. 
but in response in the in the world level of our relationships sometimes what what becomes beautiful and abundant involves me checking my own stuff as i kind of watch and see the abundance of others around me and what they have to offer and all of a sudden that's when abundance starts to show up is when i'm my my own self is kind of understood better my own finite person yeah so that yeah, so living i mean life i'm always amazed at how people like the drive to live right like i mean survive just survival right like but that isn't quite what jesus is talking about right it is about um abundance and whatever that looks like you know and um I saw a note, right? You got a little text from Pastor I did. John. John, John's, John's watching. John's got our backs. Pastor John's, John's got our backs. Psalm 23 too. Which yeah. Is, and of course, uh, dearly if loved. there's any psalm that emotionally connects abundance with people, that one does. Yeah. And of course, as a pastor, you know, well, it's used, of course, in funeral liturgies a lot, yeah. partly because it is so beloved and it's the only one that I think everyone knows, even if you... Yeah. Have never gone to church you've heard it in popular culture because it's really like the psalm that gets you know trotted out all the time like in uh but it is i think for a good reason because it is such a beautiful poetic image of how god is with us even when we're in valleys of shadow yeah and death yeah um you yeah, know the, it's it's, your, it's a it's about a journey it's about uh, being a shepherd you're led out you're out there you're um, you know, I, I jokingly kind of re recognized I was going to be able to preach on this gospel when I went on a walk up at Sea Ranch and I ran into the sheep. I'm like, oh my <laughs> gosh, they're right here, you know, and they're, you know, they, and they, and, and up here they get, they move from commons to commons to commons to keep the, keep the uh, meadow. Land. Mowing. <laughs> and, yeah, they're mowers. <laughs> but it's all, but in, in, when you do 23rd Psalm at a funeral, of course, it, people are thinking of the whole, of, journey of a life that there is being celebrated in that moment so yeah and the connection and, uh, relationship the preparing a table in the presence of my enemies i i was thinking of that the other day too in terms of what happens around a table you know because um in these resurrection stories it's in eating that jesus is revealed a lot of times like the emmaus stories the breaking the bread and um, even in the text this week with John 21, where Jesus says, you know, come, come and have breakfast with me. Um, and so there's this sense that like we eat together and yeah. who we eat with matters. Right. And, yeah. um, and I always heard that, that part of the Psalm as like, oh, I get to eat in front of you because you're my enemy. Um, but I think it was my old Testament professor who sort of um broke that open for me to think about like well what if your enemies are at the table with you mm -hmm. and what if it is an equalizer or like a shifting uh, because god prepares that table in the presence of your enemies yeah and it's sort of the love love your enemies yeah you know, and, and, and and i was thinking when i finally had to i had to infuse a resurrection account into the into my sermon and and ended up with Jesus charging Peter um, for this work of being the first shepherd after Jesus um, ascends, and and of course it's about feed feed my sheep. The you know there's so there's always this nourishment piece to it. This is a um, you know there's be involved in the provision for the sake of of the people that you're in ministry with and called to. So that, well, let me that, think how you broke open that sense of the gate in your sermon too right like because i think it's our natural tendency as human beings too to figure out who's my who's my enemy or who's on the other side of the gate right but what if the gate has a different purpose right because we see it as like well i'm a gatekeeper yeah it doesn't say i'm a gatekeeper yeah that's right and we always when we're when we're my my, my experience is when i'm defining myself in i'm my the way i do that is to exclude someone else and so the easiest way to do have, historically throughout the Christian tradition, throughout all traditions, I believe, is to exclude the ones we don't understand. 
and they're the and and people that are um, you know outside of the majority position or the majority identity or the majority and, and those are the ones that we have always always said no not you um, and so to me it was like what if what if the gate had a completely different purpose than our kind of like doing that division and that it's always about in relation to the good shepherd leading us out all of us knowing all of our names that also it was about bringing us in and the enemy to that the thieves and the bandits were connected with murder and and theft and destruction and so when we go about that work we are not working with the good shepherd if that's the work we're doing if we're if, if we're doing harm to another with our thoughts words or deeds um, taking from them um, excluding them that we are not in, in work with the good shepherd yeah pastor john reminds us that uh revelation revelation speaks to an image of a city with no gate that's wide open to all and in a sense if if revelation is the picture of the kingdom of god you know finally arriving and jesus is partly that structure um of that city then you know i guess it, it holds right to say like well as a as the gate there is no need for a gate in some ways right like that sense of like um always flipping our expectations and our tendencies on their head um we very much live in communities that have fences and so i always think some communities don't have fences they they're there's not they're they're more fluid um and yeah. you know the, the problem the fences can be very nice i i you know i'm not arguing against it but it does have consequences um that we should be mindful about and yeah yeah hey, i was i was thinking oh go ahead i was just gonna say i was thinking about all of this kind of food provision and stuff and i thought about all these restaurants that are around you know Know, in our neighborhood, how hard this pandemic has been on, uh, you know, the rind, you know, some of my favorites, you know, um, uh, Zocalo. Craigville, Craigville. Yeah, Zocalo's Buckhorns, uh, these wonderful neighbors of ours. And I, you know, Rhonda and I can kind of tend in and start cooking just for ourselves. But I, you know, I, to be a good neighbor to those people, we, we're trying to do a good work with some of the restaurants I know. Do you want to say a little bit about that? Yeah, so I mean, some of them have been really generous to us. Like they recognize that we've been their neighbor for a long time and we're thankful to have them as our neighbors. And so like the Rind and Zocalo have given uh, food to the shower ministry when they've had hot food to give. So it's always nice to have like an extra, like a hot meal because we've been, they've been doing, uh, you know, sack lunches and stuff for people, but like to have a hot meal is a different thing. And, um, and so, uh, local on the Rhine, um, other neighboring businesses like Fleet Feet, which is not that far from the church have like helped with shoes and different kinds of things. So, um, so we're really thankful to have those neighbors, uh, who care for us as we, um, we hope that we're caring for them as well and that we can have that relationship, uh, continue into the future. Yeah. There's a bunch of neighbors that we were just thinking that we have relationships with. Um, connections, loafing, loafing's lighting. Uh, I, the last um, fixture, light fixture I bought in my house was for, uh, actually Max Loping, um, who is married to Kari Hanson Smith. So now Kari Loping, I assume. Um, but uh, but I shouldn't assume. I'm not sure what they've done with their last names. They're, shame on me for presuming anything, right? Oh, Rhonda, Hol Rhonda Holman, my spouse, is like wondering what the heck are you right. presuming? I was going to say we can put a pitch in for uh, people to make sure they update their information in our system <laughs> if you get that letter. Right. Or go to our website. <laughs> so you have well, your correct, whatever you want to go by, we, we need to know that. So you can go to yeah. our website. And Kari will let me know. Yeah. Kari will let me know. Or send it out to you. <laughs> and she should, but I'm just thinking Fleet Feet, Buckhorns, the Real Pie Company, um, Masola Pizza, Estelle Bakery, Capital Books on K, and Pops Premium Meats and Elk Grove. And we're just, we're trying to fill out and have a better understanding of our people and how they're connected in the community in all kinds of really cool ways. And we decided, you know, business is a way to understand people's lives, what, what yeah. their vocation is that pays the bills and all of that. So. 
And, you know, I think we all realize things are going to be very different after this pandemic. You know, I don't even know if you, I guess you can say it would be over, but like, but we'll be living with this and it's yeah. effects for a while. And, you know, and we all know that a lot of our small businesses are at risk. So we want to make sure that we support them and try and keep them going. And um, I was actually at the, um, I don't know if you've ever been uh, to the barn in West Sac. Uh, it's on the river there. It's a big like open I space. Have. I have. Um, Rhonda and I can well walk around there sometimes. Yeah. So Matthew uh, Fox, who's one of our members, our new, he was in the Luminaria class in the fall, um, is the general manager there. So we actually, they have now uh, takeout uh, beer and, and food. Like if you buy food, you can take out beer. So we went there the other day. So that's another one that, you know, just one of our members yeah. part of and. I, I, by the way, Pastor John, who did um, uh, Max and Kari's wedding, said that Kari went with loafing, and so here I'm, I'm glad to get the I'm glad to get the the, the real information from the pa from the pastor on the ground for that one. So. Right. <laughs> we also um, have. And, um, can you? Oh, go ahead. You were going to ask. I was I was just going to say I know that speaking of restaurants that you're trying you're trying to be more involved with restaurants providing meals for oh yeah really um, other other situ other people that need meals right yeah so um and I'll, I'll have to get uh i forget all the restaurants that are involved but there's a an organization of like a sort of a cooperative of restaurants in sacramento doing what they're calling family meals um and i i've seen other restaurants doing this as well but we um donated as a church from our pastor's discretionary fund uh, $2,000, which will provide 100 meals uh, or 100 meal kits for families of four. Um, and so it, it's a program that allows restaurants to have some business because they're providing these meals. And also they take the meals to different um, families that are in need in this time and in need of food support uh, in uh, food insecure time. So, um, so family meals is one way uh, that you can maybe if you have some extra money, maybe part of your stimulus uh, package, if you got some um, yeah. and don't need it all, that you could maybe donate to some of these local uh, charities that are really doing good work on the ground. I think May 7th is the big day of giving. So you'll be getting some, you know, obviously uh, things popping up about good good ministries to give to. And so uh, please consider- yeah, as, as, we, as we continue to really focus on giving to people and, and, and I like what I like about that restaurant supporting it supports restaurants and it supports organizations that need families that need some food it has a double benefit but yeah. all of that presumes that St. Saint, Saint John's is up and operating in, in important ways so we, I keep or you know as the pastor that's in charge of stewardship just you know being without the offering plates passing I you know we, we want to keep doing these this other work but it presumes that our foundation is strong. And so I, I just put a word in there that please know the different ways to make your offering online or mailing checks or is so important right now. The, the people of St. John's are really, I wanna say they're, you know, they're, they're tending this, um, you know, it's tend my sheep that people are tending this aspect of responsibility. And we don't know what all, there are gonna be job lot. There are people in our congregation yeah. that have lost jobs already. We don't know the full extent of that. And a steward, a pledge and a, your decision about offering is always a plan. It's not a, you know, I, you, it can always be adjusted and should yeah. be if, if circumstances change. But, but you know, it, the, this is one of the things that it, when we're, when we're foundation is good, it lets us continue to really go out there with pastors discretionary money and saying, hey, you know, with the showers ministry we're doing and all that good work, you know, go to that GoFundMe page and we, and we keep directing people out and out and out. It presumes that the, the kind of the, the giving to St. John's is solid and it has been And it. My prayer is we're going to make our way through this and be okay. We, we have yeah. not gone to get outside money. We, we believe we can do this if we come together, we think we can. So yeah, we're really grateful that people are faithful and, you know, and, like you said, I mean, we, we make the decisions about finances also prayerfully and faithfully. Right. And, and we know that there's with the big day of giving coming and all the, you know, there's always so many places that we can give. So yeah, know that people will be and, faithful. And, and we want people to, to think of their offering beyond just giving to the church. We, I always say 
when Rhonda and I sit down every year to figure out the money in our income that we're going to to allow to flow through us, God's good provision. Then and our ability to not hold on. Pastor Frank, I think he's freezing up a little bit. But I think he's talking about you know, making a, a faithful decision in giving and that he and Rhonda sit down and kind of do that each year. Um, and so we hope that, uh, that that's a practice that you and your family do too and can challenge yourself to, to give abundantly out of the abundant life that God has promised to us. So thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, please tune in to the, um, the watch party at one o'clock of the Care for Creation team. Um, they'll be uh, going over the I, social statement, the care of creation. So that'll be at one o'clock. And then on Tuesday uh, at 5.30 or Thursday at 12.30, you can join me for, uh, this will be the last week of our Easter resurrection story uh, Bible studies. Um, and then uh, Wednesday, and I actually, I don't know the time if Pastor John can text me, um, but Wednesday, Pastor John's going to be doing um, some uh Oh, that was, he texted me, but that wasn't the time. But on Wednesdays, Pastor John's going to be doing a little check-in with people um, in the afternoons. Um, if he doesn't text me in the next uh, minute or so, uh, you can go to our website and find out all that information or pay attention on our social media um, because we have a lot of offerings um, that are coming up for you to stay engaged and stay connected. We also have a Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Uh, coffee check-in with uh, Laura King, who's a member of our church. Um, so there's a lot of ways that we're trying to continue to be connected. Um, yeah. You froze up a little, Pastor Frank, so I, I just- I talked. did, I, I, I had to reconnect I, and I got back in and you were, you were on it. So yeah. it's, been, it's been good to gather. Uh, I, I, my coffee is almost gone. I'm gonna have to go get another cup of it, you know. Oh, and that uh, gathering on uh, Wednesdays is 3.30 to 4.15. So you can check in with Pastor John, have a little Wednesday snack and check-in. Uh, and so if you email him, or contact us, you can get the Zoom information for that conversation. Well, thanks, Pastor well, Frank. It's been fun to yeah, chat. Yeah, it's good. It, thank you, pa pa Pastor Amy. You, it, it is uh, always good to have conversations like this. And I, I love that a big piece of your, uh, you know, your directorate on outreach, you, uh, you come to an understanding that it's about formation for all of us, that we're all a people that need to be formed more closely into being, understanding that, Jesus is the good shepherd and the gate that leading us out and tucking us in and, um, and that we be formed that way so that we can be liberated enough to get over our little selves to be bigger participants in the world. And so thanks for, thanks always for your uh, leading in that vein. I appreciate yeah, it. You're welcome. Oh, maybe we should have a prayer to end. I think we uh, did that. I think that's my responsibility. Uh, this oh, week. there you go. I'll pray with, <laughs> oh. I'll listen. You pray. All right. The Lord be with you all. And also with you. God, our good shepherd, we thank you for the ways that you lead and guide us uh, in safe paths and how you have nourished and fed us uh, with the bread of life, your son, Jesus. We ask that um, as we uh, have studied today that you, your spirit would touch our hearts um, and that you would uh, show us the way that you would have us go and in, um, show us ways that we can feed and tend your sheep in the world, even uh, when we are uh, more restricted in that, but there are still ways that we can be your people in this world. So we ask that uh, you would show us that and that you would bless us this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Yeah, bye. See you.